I'm Tiffany Chapuzio Wong, and this is the fourth video in the ArubaBots Automate Ansible series. And today I'm going to be talking to you about our Ansible support for the AOSCX platform and the AOSCX role. First, I'll be explaining Ansible roles, and then I'll be introducing you to the AOSCX role, going over how to install the role both in Ansible Engine and Ansible Tower, then discussing how to use the AOSCX role in a playbook. I'll start the video explaining these concepts through slides, and then later I'll actually be walking through every step live. So feel free to skip past the slides if you want to see the walkthrough. So what is an Ansible role? Our support for Ansible with Aruba CX comes packaged in the AOS CX Ansible role. Now, what is an Ansible role, you might ask? Well, a role is a way to automatically load certain variables, tasks, and even templates based on a known file structure. It's typically used when configuring a system for a specific purpose, such as a DHCP server. And the Ansible role would contain all the variables, playbooks, and other files necessary for configuring a system to be a DHCP server. In addition to automating devices for a specific function, vendors are also using roles to package and distribute their Ansible modules to users. Roles are uploaded to Ansible's role repository called Ansible Galaxy, and you can kind of think of this as Ansible's version of the Aruba Solution Exchange. Now that we understand what an Ansible role actually is, let's dive deeper into how we've implemented our Aruba CX Ansible support with the AOS CX role. The AOS CX role is our packaged Ansible support to configure and manage your CX device. We have several modules that enable users to configure features such as access lists, interfaces, and even firmware upgrades, all using the Aruba CX REST API. We also have the option for users to use SSH modules to execute CLI commands in cases where they want to automate a feature and we're still developing support for it. Installing our AOS CX role is easy. You simply need to have Ansible installed on your system and then execute the Ansible Galaxy command displayed on the screen. When using Ansible Tower, you must include the path where your tower searches for your roles. By default, it's in the forward slash etc slash ansible slash roles and you can specify this path by using the dash dash roles dash path option. I'll be demonstrating how to install the AOS CX role later in this video and you can check out our link to our role on Galaxy in the description down below. All of our modules and their documentation can be found on our AOS CX Ansible role GitHub repository and you can get to this repository either um, on github.com slash Aruba or if you visit our Galaxy role if you just click on this github repo here it'll bring you to our github repository where you find our documentation for all of our modules as well as any release notes that we have published as well. Once the AOS CX role is installed using the modules in the role is simple. Since our modules use REST API, you have to ensure that REST is enabled on your CX device and that the REST access is set to read write. Make sure whatever VRF you're intending to use Ansible on has REST enabled. Same goes for SSH. If you're planning on using our SSH modules, make sure the SSH server is enabled on the VRF. With CX, it's required to have specific variables defined in your Ansible inventory in order for Ansible to be able to connect and communicate with your device. Depending on whether you're using the REST API modules or the SSH CLI modules will affect which variables you need to specify. If you're planning on using a combination of both, I recommend setting up your inventory for the REST API modules and then changing the connection value in the playbook itself. I'll be demonstrating how to do this later in the video. This is an example of a YAML inventory file where the CX device is defined to use the REST API modules. This is an example of a YAML inventory file where the CX device is defined to use as SSH modules. The only thing that we have to specify that's specific for the SSH connection is setting that Ansible connection to be the network CLI. To use the modules in the AOS CX role, you'll need to import your role into your playbook. Like I mentioned before, Ansible roles were originally created to configure a device for a specific task. 
So some Ansible rules will automatically load certain files or even run specific playbooks automatically upon importing them into your playbook. But with AOS CX, we're simply just telling Ansible to use the modules in that role that we've installed. Nothing will automatically execute upon this import. You'll need to import the AOS CX role at the beginning of every play in your playbook by specifying the value roles and creating a list entry setting role equal to Aruba Networks AOS CX role. It is possible for you to use multiple roles inside your playbook. Now once that's done, using the modules is the same as usual. You'll name your task and provide the name of the module followed by the parameters and values you want Ansible to use to configure your device. If you're unfamiliar with creating an Ansible inventory or writing an Ansible playbook, I suggest watching the previous videos in the ArubaBots Automate Ansible series. So now that you know everything about the AOS CX role, let's see it in action. This is my Ansible control machine. It is a Ubuntu 16.04 version and it's currently running Ansible version 2.9.6. Now to install the AOS CX role into our Ansible engine, all we simply have to do is type in the Ansible Galaxy command and hit enter. And this will go ahead and just download that role directly from Ansible Galaxy itself. Now let's say we want to go ahead and install the AOS CX role into our Ansible Tower Path. We just execute the same command, but provide in that roles path. And in my environment, it is etc, ansible, and then roles. Now if you look, it went ahead and installed the role in the roles path that I provided, but also to ensure that it was installed in the Ansible engine, it went ahead and try to install it in that default path for Ansible Engine, which it already exists, so there's no problem there. If you ever want to reinstall the role or pull any additional updates that we've pushed to the role, all you have to do is just re-execute that Ansible Galaxy command. It'll check to see if the latest version on the repository is the same that's installed in your system. If it's not, it'll go ahead and update it. Or, at any point in time, you could also use the force option to force it to reinstall that role from Ansible Galaxy. So now that we have our AOS CX role installed, it's time for us to set up our inventory. Here's my inventory file. It's a YAML formatted host file with only one device, and that's this AOS CX1 device I have here. I have my Ansible host, Ansible user, and Ansible password defined, and these are the variables that Ansible will use to log into the device and send those REST API commands to. Next we have our Ansible network OS, and this is set to AOS CX, and it must always be set to AOS CX, whether you're using the REST API modules or the SSH modules. Ansible connection I'm setting to HTTP API since I'm using REST. Now, Ansible HTTP API use SSL, we must always set that to true since our modules are using that port 443 for those REST API calls. These next two variables will most likely differ for you and your environment. The variable Ansible HTTP API validate certificates. This tells Ansible whether or not to validate the SSL certificates on the switch or not. And in my lab, since my lab switch doesn't have a valid SSL certificate, I'm setting that to false. And most likely that'll be different if you are working with a production switch. So lastly, the variable Ansible ACX no proxy tells Ansible whether or not to use the machine's environment proxy variable when connecting to the switch. And I don't want that, so I'm setting that to true, um, but also that could be different for you and your environment, so just keep that in mind. Now that our inventory is set up, let's write our playbook. So in this playbook, I'll show you how to use the AOS CX role for both the SSH and REST API modules. I'm going to keep this playbook somewhat simple, but hopefully it helps a lot. First, I need to set up my playbook like I normally would by defining my hosts and setting my gather facts to false. Then I want to define the roles I'm going to be using in my play. I do this by defining roles and then setting a role equal to my Aruba Networks.AOSCX role that I just imported. 
Now I can use my CX modules as I normally would by defining the tasks and then the modules. So here's my playbook. I wanted to keep it simple. In this playbook, I'm going to be uploading a new firmware image to the device using the AOS CX upload firmware module and an image I have on my local machine, and then have that device boot to that partition that I just uploaded the new image to. Here's my device. As you can see, it's a default 6300 CX device. I'm going to be using the IP address that we get from the uh, management interface through DHCP. And as you can see, it's running that 10.4.1 image. So now to run the playbook. So the playbook is finished and the device is still processing the reboot. So I'll probably speed up until it's finished. And now look, we're in the future and it's finished booting. <laughs> So if we log into the switch and check out the version, you can see that it's running that 10.4.20 image that we just uploaded to it. So it's a helpful playbook, but you don't want to unnecessarily be uploading the images to a device and having it reboot all the time. So now I'll show you how you can use the SSH modules and some Ansible concepts that allow you to do some more intelligent logic. So since you have to change the Ansible connection variable, you have to separate your connections on a per play basis. So I'm going to be creating another play the same way I created the last one. Um, the only difference is now I'm going to be setting that variable Ansible connection to network CLI. And this is how I can use the SSH modules in this play. So again, we want to keep it on a per play basis, a specific connection. So one play you'll be doing the SSH modules, another play you'll be doing the REST API. So here's my playbook. I'm using the AOSCX command module to execute the command show version. And then I'm going to save or register that output into a variable called version output. Now what I want to do is check to see if that version that's currently running on the switch is the one I'm planning to upload. If it is, then I won't upload a new image, but if it isn't, I will. So this next part is going to cover some Ansible concepts that I'll go over in later videos, but hopefully you can still follow along. In my second play, I've surrounded my tasks in my upload firmware play with a conditional statement. And this allows me to essentially group these tasks together and only execute them when a condition is true. Using Jinda2 tests, these tasks will only run when the version output shows that the version is not that 10.4.20 version that we want it to have. So let's save this and go ahead and run. Since we've already updated the switch, I went ahead and put the older firmware version back on the device, so this play will actually update it. Now running this playbook is the exact same as before, but since we're executing the show commands in our playbook and we're not explicitly outputting them to the screen, we need to run our playbook in verbose mode to see the output of that show command. And we do this by passing in the dash V option. And as you can see, it went ahead and found that the version that was running isn't the latest version. So it went ahead and updated it. Now I went ahead and waited until the reboot has finished. And if we run that playbook again, as you can see, it went ahead and found that the 10.4.20 is the latest version that's running on the switch. So it went ahead and skipped those tasks that would have updated the firmware and booted the switch. All right, and that's it. So today you've learned about the AOSCX Ansible rule, how to install it, and how to use it in a playbook. Check out the links in the description down below to our Airheads developer community where you can go ahead and post any questions you're having with any issues with your automation journey. And uh, you can see the links to our GitHub repository for our AOSCX role as well as our AOSCX role on Ansible Galaxy itself. Thank you guys so much. Happy automating and I'll see you next time.